Pavlich, editor at townhall.com and Fox News contributor, Brian Brenberg, co-host of The Big Money Show, and Jason Chaffetz, former Utah congressman, fellow at the Government Accountability Institute, and Fox News contributor and author of The Puppeteers. All right. Katie Pavlich, how about it? I want some optimism. I want a positive message. I want growth. I want to end to Bidenomics. I want to stop all this crazy climate change. You think the participants tonight can figure this out? Are we going to hear this stuff? Or is it going to be <laughs> boring and dull, and, or they're all going to attack Trump or whatever? What do you think, Katie Pavlich? Well, I certainly don't think it will be boring or dull. And considering that the economy is the number one issue for Americans, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or independent, or even apolitical at this point, uh, that's something that Martha and Brett will certainly be asking about. And the Biden campaign and President Biden clearly think the economy is an issue, which is why they're pushing this Bidenomics, no matter how dishonest it is, because they know that people vote on a good economy. So they're trying to sell to people that the economy is fine, but people know that it's not. They're paying upwards of $10,000 extra per year now due to inflation for everyday products while their wages are not growing, as the president has falsely claimed. And so you have a lot of good candidates tonight. You have Doug Burgum, uh, the governor of North Dakota. I'm really interested in watching what he has to say. He's a businessman. He's able to get himself on that debate stage by paying people $20 for a dollar donation, which is a lot cheaper than everybody else spent <laughs> on getting, you know, ads and trying to get people to donate through text messages and email blasts and all that kind of thing. And he's talked about having growth in the economy and how the way to get yourself out of, you know, this issue of high prices is to drill in America, not to go after people's Katie, tax Katie, uh, wait a second. Is Bergham going to be there? I was reading. I, I, I was saw reading him in the spin room. I think he's going to be there. column in townhall.com. <laughs> what did he do? He shot himself There's in the leg update. or somebody shot him <laughs> no, or he fell he, down? He, or, no, he was playing what, basketball and he tore his Achilles. But Vladimir he Putin and tried to kill around. him in a private airplane. God <laughs> no, knows what's no, no, going no. on out there. He's, he's right. very injured, but I think he will but make it tonight. He was walking around this spin room. All right, Jason so, yeah. Chaffetz, uh, former chair of the Oversight <laughs> Committee. Jason, I'm going to say this. I know that Katie is right and that our intrepid, that uh, Martha and Brett Baer are going to ask economic questions. But in terms of economic answers or economic anything, this could be a brand new experience for at least half the candidates because they ain't said anything hardly on the campaign trail about the economy. And it's one of the things that bothers me. No economic growth agenda message. No Reagan-type positive message. No, heaven forbid, Trump tax cuts. Yeah, they need specifics. They they, they, they need Nothing. To, they, number one, they need to be authentic. They need to be able to say what they have done and what they're going to do. You can bash on Biden, but take maybe eight seconds to do that. You better pivot really quickly and start reeling off what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Reagan had this persona. He had this intangible leadership. People are looking for leadership. If they start bickering with each other, trying to talk over each other, that's not leadership. That ain't going to cut it. I do think they need specifics. Specifics about energy, because I don't believe you can grow the economy without getting energy prices to reasonable and low there you cost. Go. Drill, baby, you drill. Cannot, you drill, cannot, baby, drill. Yes. Right? And, and you go through all that school choice, all these other things. But the economy, the economy, and the economy. Don't keep telling people how bad they have it. What are you going to mm. do about it? Brian Brenberg, however, I can think of at least one and maybe more candidates we're going to spend this evening attacking Trump. Yeah. Not Biden, but Trump. And I want to get your ta I want you to be brutally, candidly honest about this. Really. I, you, I'm going to be lose. hard on it. You lose if you do that because we've all heard the Who's attacks the enemy here? on Trump. If you, if you give me an attack on Trump, I've heard it 20 times before. Right. And I've heard it from people who hate him more than you. So it was probably even fiercer from them. That would be a losing strategy. Reagan made a great point in that 84 speech. He said Democrats are characterized by fear, pessimism, Ooh, and limits. Right. How'd you know we, that? You uh, Republicans, you I don't want to hear fear, pessimism, and limits tonight. I want to hear something that overcomes that. And, and what I want to hear is somebody in a positive way say, we are going to dismantle this undemocratic, unelected, bureaucratic state because that's how Bidenomics works. It doesn't really work through legislation. It works through a dictatorship of the bureaucracy. Gazillion new Fix regulations. That. Gazillion new regulations, yeah. I call it. Now, I think that's a good point. But I just, um, Katie, attacking Trump, 
or attacking Biden? I'm asking this, and I'm aiming this question at Chris Christie, because so yeah. far, <laughs> virtually everything he says from his perch on these liberal media Sunday talk shows that he loves, all he does is attack Trump. He's doing it again. Somebody told me even that my pal Mike Pence is going to try to distinguish himself by attacking Trump. And, Katie, I'm going to say... Republican Party supports Trump right now. They would make a big mistake if they, uh, you know, aim their fire at Trump rather than Joe Biden. What do you think? Who's going to do it? Who might be dumb enough to try that, Katie? Well, I was trying to think about who you were talking about. My first top choice was Chris Christie. Even it's, you know, there's been some talk about Vivek Ramaswamy being called Vivek the fake by Ron DeSantis. But Chris Christie is someone who was perfectly fine with working with Trump throughout the Trump administration. And as soon as it became inconvenient for the narrative in the liberal yeah. media, he was happy to turn on him uh, and has been running against him ever since then. Um, you know, you have to distinguish yourself from Trump somehow, which is, you know, the candidates had a really difficult time doing this. They're trying to emphasize they like Trump policies, but that somehow it's time to move on from the actual candidate. And that has not worked well for any of them, which is why Donald Trump is ahead by 40 points and isn't even showing up tonight. And so, you know, you do lose if you attack Trump, but you have to find a way to distinguish yourself uh, from his policies if you want to kind of break out and be your own well, independent voice, yeah. especially on issues like the economy. Yeah, but you know. Or foreign policy. You could, right. There are issues on foreign policy here, Ukraine, Russian war being one of them. You can embellish, I mean, you can go beyond Trump policies. Jason Chaffetz, though, I have a thought. Um, Vivek Ramaswamy, and we, I think we're going to have him on the show tomorrow night, but in any case, he has said that if president, he would pardon Trump, okay? Would you say such a thing? Or if um, you're president, you would commute any sentences or you would tell your Justice Department to drop the charges? Would you say such a thing? Would you suggest to them that they say such a thing? Well, I think they may be asked a direct question. The problem with that is it doesn't address the situation in Georgia. And again, they have got to quickly pivot off that and get back to... So if they go after uh, Donald Trump and start to try to justify or explain that, Guess what? They're going to get booed at this convention. Mm -hmm. You have got mm -hmm. to get the tr you got to get the Trump voter to like you and support you. By the way, you mentioned foreign policy. I think the biggest difference that we haven't really explored yet with these candidates is probably in the area of foreign policy. Mm -hmm. It is fascinating to see. But I want them to also ask very quickly. How are you going to cut the regulatory state? How are you going to cut right. the federal budget? It's an easy bumper sticker. But it's so hard to do. And so Donald Trump, yeah, the Trump tax cuts, they worked. The only mistake, my only criticism is they didn't cut spending. Well, Brian Bradberg, balance the budget. Newt Gingrich is very keen on balance the budget. Would you advocate that one of these or others talk about balancing the budget, talk about the debt problem? Yeah. You talk about the debt. You're always lecturing me about the debt up on the 12th <laughs> floor. That's I mean, your personal so, debt, though, Larry. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love debt. Debt is American as cherry pie. You know I believe that. Sounds like the guy you work for. But in all seriousness, actually, both of them. But that's, seriously, yeah. balancing the budget, yes. I think that's yes. a winner. And you can distinguish yourself by that? Talk about all of this stuff. Talk about pulling back from all of the insanity that we're dealing with right now. Go big. Why dink around the margins with things here? Talk about balancing a budget, cutting taxes, reducing the state. I, I love what Vivek says about firing like 75% of the federal workforce. Mm. They won't even come in the office anymore. Mm. They don't go in the office. You have an the empty biggest growth building area there. in the economy. The biggest growth area in the last jobs report, number government. one category, government, government yeah. employees. So just go big on that. Tell Americans you're putting power back into their hands, just like Reagan did. That's where his hope came from. It didn't come from the government. And let people decide from themselves. If you spend time on Trump, you're a footnote to Trump. If you spend time on your plan, you might be able to distinguish yourself. Katie Pavlich, um, they might go to China. <clears throat> but it's too mm -hmm. easy to hate China. Everybody hates China <laughs> in America, particularly after the balloons. But, ah, Katie, Katie yeah. serious question, though. What about the Russian-Ukraine war? Do you think mm -hmm. um, some or others will come out and say, no, we need a peace deal, America can't keep uh, forking over $100, $200 billion a year to Ukraine? What do you think of that foreign policy issue, Katie Pavlich? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's certainly a huge issue for conservatives who believe that a lot of the money they're spending, there's ta hard-earned taxpayer dollars when the government is, you know, 30 trillion dollars plus in debt. Uh, there needs to be more accounting for that, not to mention they don't trust the Biden administration, which is moving too slowly on this issue, to not allow it to spin completely out of control. And when it comes back to Joe Biden as the president making these decisions, there's a lot of runway here for Republicans to go after him on corruption issues. So President Joe Biden was in charge of the Ukraine portfolio when he was the vice president under Barack Obama. He kept telling Ukraine, you can't get into NATO, can't get into NATO because of corruption in the country, and yet he was involved deeply with his son, Hunter Biden, in that very corruption that he was saying that the country and its companies and governments had to clean up. So, you know, there's a lot of questions, too, about the first impeachment of Donald Trump when they impeached him over asking about that very corruption with the new president, Zelensky. Um, and we know that it was true. And imagine if Donald Trump, instead of being focused on this impeachment inquiry, could have had a better relationship with Ukraine and maybe prevented this from happening in the first place. What do you do with Trump in this, Jason? What do you do with him? It's a very tricky. Do you defend him? Do you pardon him? In this debate, it's going to come up. Brett Baer's a smart guy. You Martha pivot. Mack is I very smart. Candidate, you have to, what are you going to do with him? You, you pivot to the policy, and, and you show where you agree on the policy, and if you disagree where, you, where you're different on the, on the policy. But if, if, you, if you stick to the policy, stay above the fray, I think the, the one that will come out the cleanest on this, the one who actually has, it will be uh, Senator Tim Scott. Mm. When he can talk about, ec <laughs> ec 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 you know, his opportunity yeah. zones, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he is yeah, yeah. masterful in never going into that trap. And, oh, you know, he made a joke. Would you, you know, consider being the vice president? And he'd say, oh, no, I think Donald Trump is way overqualified to be my vice president. You know, <laughs> the, 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 he's good. very good at That's that stuff. Good. Ron DeSantis also has a story to tell as a governor. He, he, Just real quick. Yeah, um, DeSantis has a story to tell as governor, but all he does is talk about Walt Disney. Yeah, I think all right. he... I, I mean, I'm sorry. I know he's smart. I know he's a conservative. I'm tired of saying this, but he has no economic... And, and, and he's just had the worst campaign in memory. He's, he's got... A God, great I mean, economic story to tell, but he just he hasn't done it. He's gotten sidetracked. And I thought he'd be the guy who'd stay focused on the majors, not the minors. And he's been the one of any of them that's gotten pulled off course. Tonight's a big night for him. He's got to fix that quick, or I think the diminishing interest this could in be his campaign. Last. If he doesn't have a good night, I this, can't believe I'm saying this that. Could be his last night. Was. That's a great no, no good insight. If he doesn't have a good night, this could be his last night. I think I think the donors say donors. we missed it on this one. Yep. Donors, donors are always. I wrong. disagree with you both on this donors one. Donors are always wrong. What you think? <laughs> I, this, I disagree you think with you. Sanders is running a terrific campaign. Oh, he's, he's number two. Uh, it's the best place to be, and there's a reason why they're all going to go after him. You ever hear but the, you know it. You ever hear the Wall Street anecdote, Jason Chaffetz? What's that? You know how to create a small fortune. Start with a large one. <laughs> that is the DeSantis. Oh, oh. That is the DeSantis legacy. Katie, I'm sorry. They're yelling at me. I'm out of time. That's why you have to come on set so these guys don't hog it all the time. That's Katie okay. Pavlich, Jason Chaffetz, and Brian Brenberg.